this session explains construction and working of state com apart from that it also describes key features and comparison between state com and one of the most popular shunt connected fax device svc so let us begin to understand static compensator which is state com so here is the power diagram equivalent circuit diagram and power flow exchange diagram of state com it is a shunt connected reactive power compensation device so in the classification of the fax device we have seen that state com falls under the shunt connected category it is capable of generating and or absorbing reactive power and in which the output can be varied to control the specific parameters of an electric power system so the state com has ability to inject or absorb the reactive power along with that it can control the specific parameter of electric power system it is a solid state switching converter which is capable of generating or absorbing independently controllable real and reactive power at its output terminals when it is fed from an energy source or energy storage device at its input terminals so with the help of line diagram let us understand the working of state com so in the diagram you can see that here is the utility or we can say the power system bus and this one is the medium voltage bus so the state com is connected to the high voltage bus via this medium voltage system through this coupling transformer so the voltage at the point of connection in the power system is denoted by et or we can say e utility and the voltage at this point is denoted by es the voltage produced by state com and the state com is nothing but it is a voltage source converter and at the input of voltage source converter we have the energy source or we can say energy storage device capacitor so input to the voltage source converter is in the form of dc output of the voltage source converter would be ac in nature so that we can couple this converter to the ac system so we can say that voltage source converter is nothing but it is an inverter it converts dc parameters into ac parameters so it produces a set of three phase ac output voltages each in phase width and coupled to the corresponding ac system voltage through a relatively small reactor so each phase of this ac output voltages is in phase width and also coupled to the corresponding ac system voltage through this relatively small reactor and that reactance is nothing but it is offered by the magnetic coupling the coupling transformer we have used to couple the state com to the utility bus the dc voltage is provided by an energy storage capacitor which is connected at the input of this voltage source converter a vac is connected to a utility bus through this magnetic coupling which is nothing but a coupling transformer so the exchange of reactive power between the converter and the ac system can be controlled by varying the amplitude of the three phase output voltage es of the converter right so this magnitude of this voltage can be controlled by controlling the power semiconductor devices used in the construction of the voltage source converter so the reactive power compensation totally depends on the magnitude of es and et if the amplitude of the output voltage is increased above that of the utility bus voltage then 
a current flows through the reactance from the converter to the AC system and the converter generates the capacitive reactive power for the AC system. It means that when the magnitude of the ES is greater than the ET, then the direction of the current would be from voltage source converter to the AC system and it injects the reactive power into the AC system. But when the amplitude of the ES is less than the ET, then the direction of the current would be from the AC system towards the voltage source converter and this state form absorbs the reactive power from the AC system. Hence, the magnitude of output voltage of this voltage source converter decides the reactive power flow, whether the state form should absorb the reactive power or it should inject the reactive power into the system. If the output voltage equals the AC system voltage, that is when ES is equal to ET, the reactive power exchange becomes zero. In that case, we can say the state form is in the floating state. Neither it absorbs the reactive power nor it injects the reactive power into the system when the magnitude of ES and ET is same. Similarly, the phase shift between the ES and ET decides the real power exchange. Let us see how does the state form do this. The converter can supply the real power to the AC system from its DC energy storage if the converter output voltage which is ES is made to lead the AC system voltage. In short, when the state form voltage leads the utility voltage then the real power would flow from DC energy storage towards the AC system. And when the ES voltage lags behind this utility voltage, then the state form would absorb the real power from the AC system. That is, direction of the real power is from utility bus AC system towards this energy storage device. Right? So the magnitude decides the direction of reactive power, but the phase angle between these two voltages decides the direction of the reactive power. Moving ahead, a state comb. Key features of state comb. A state comb can improve power system performance in many areas like the dynamic voltage control in transmission and the distribution system, the power oscillation damping in the power transmission system which means that it can provide us better damping of power parameter in the power transmission system. It offers better transient stability. Apart from that, it can also control the voltage flickering. And it does not control only the reactive power, but also active power in the connected line, requiring a DC energy source. So when the DC energy source is present, then it does not only control the reactive power, but it also controls the active power. As can be seen, the state comb can supply both the capacitive and inductive compensation, right? Which means that we understood that it can absorb the reactive power as well as it can inject the reactive power into the system and is able to independently control its output current over the rated maximum capacitive or inductive range irrespective of the amount of AC system voltage. That is, the state comb can provide full capacitive reactive power at any system voltage even as low as 0.15 per unit. I would describe this with the help of VI characteristic when I will discuss the comparison between state comb and SVC. So the power exchange diagram, 
here you can see that uh, AC system voltage VAC and the current flowing in this branch is denoted by IAC. So in this diagram VAC is taken as on the X axis and uh, current may be leading in nature or may be lagging in nature. So in this case the current leads the voltage by some amount of angle. So when this current is divided into active and reactive component and projected on x and y axis respectively then the active component of the current is denoted by ip and the reactive component is denoted by iq so by looking at this diagram we can summarize that when the magnitude of active component is positive then the state form supplies the active power and when the magnitude of active component is negative then it absorbs the active power from the AC system. What happens to the reactive power? When the reactive component is positive it supplies the reactive power and when the reactive component is negative then it absorbs the reactive power. So this is the power exchange diagram of the state comb for real and reactive power. The characteristic of the state form reveals the strength of this technology that is it is capable of yielding the full output of capacitive generation almost independently of the system voltage. This point I am going to describe in the VI characteristic of the state form that you will see that even at the very less amount of the voltage it can provide the capacitive generation which is not possible in the case of SVC. This capability is particularly useful for the situations in which the state comb is needed to support the system voltage during and after the faults, where the voltage collapse would otherwise be a limiting factor. Right? So during the fold condition or after the after the fold condition, if the system voltage would collapse at that time, the state comb should support that condition. So these E features of the state comb is very useful under these circumstances and that feature is nothing but the support of the capacitive generation even at the very less magnitude of the system voltage. Now comparison of state comb and SVC based on certain number of the parameters. The first one is the VI characteristic. Now you can see over here this is the VI characteristic of state comb and this one is the VI characteristic of SVC that you have seen earlier in the previous part. So on the right side portion is the inductive and on the left side the portion is capacitive. On the Y axis the voltage across this compensator and on the X axis the current to the compensator. Right, so the point of comparison between state comb and SVC as far as the VI characteristic is concerned is over here. Right, you can see that even at 0.2 per unit voltage, the state comb can provide the rated capacitive generation to the AC system which is not possible in the SVC. Right. At the rated condition, no doubt it can produce the maximum magnitude of the reactive power for the AC system. But for the lower voltage, the capacitive generation is less. So the state comb can be operated over its full output current range even at very low, typically about 0.2 per unit system voltage levels. In HVC, maximum attainable compensating current of HVC decreases linearly with AC system voltage. Transient stability point of view, state comb is much more better compared to the HVC. Thereafter, response time, state comb is much fast compared to the HVC. Capability to exchange the real power flow, as we have seen recently that state comb state comb can exchange the real power as well. So it is possible due to the energy storage element which is present at the input of the voltage source converter which is the capacitor right so at its DC terminal. So the real power flow exchange is possible in the case of state comb but in the case of SVC it is not possible only the reactive power compensation happens with the help of SVC. Physical size and installation point of view state comb is better than the SVC. So 
these are the comparison between the statcom and svc and based on these parameters statcom is more preferable over svc 